Now that you're familiar with calculating moments from single forces, how do we calculate the moment about a point O when there are more than one force? The moment due to a set of forces in the system S about point O is the vector sum of the moment of the individual forces about point O. In this case, we have R1 cross with F1 will give you the moment due to force 1 about point O. Notice I have R2 crossed with F2 where R2 is pointing to the line of action of F2 and it's not actually in contact with the force vector. Recall that the position vector or moment arm does not have to actually touch the force itself simply has to connect with the line of action of the force. In this case, it was convenient to choose a R vector that is only in the Y hat component. Similarly, for F3, I've chosen an X or R vector that only has an X hat component. Varignon's theorem is an extension of the moments of a set of forces about a point O. His theorem states that the moment of a force about a point is equivalent to the sum of the vector components of the force about the same point. Given a force F that can be resolved into X and Y components, the moment about, from force F about O is equal to R cross F. This is equivalent to R rho to A cross with F X plus R from O to A cross with F Y. Here's an example where we will find Varignon's theorem useful. We are asked to determine the moment from the force at point B about point O. To calculate this, we will first use the standard way to calculate the cross product, where the moment, where the moment about O from force F is equal to R from the moment center to a point along the line of action, this point being B, um, from O to B, crossed with F. We can define R is equal to 875 five millimeters x hat plus six twenty five millimeters y hat and f is given as minus eight hundred newtons sine of theta x hat minus eight hundred newtons cosine of theta y hat so the moment from force F about O is equal to R cross F. To calculate this cross product, we will use the distributive property of the cross product. After using the distributive property to calculate the cross product, we still have four cross products left. Remembering that A cross B is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between them times the unit vector u, which is determined by the right-hand rule. In this case, the magnitude of x is 1 since it's a unit vector, and since the sine of the angle between x is 0, this is 0. Since x and y are orthogonal, and x cross y, using the right-hand rule, would produce a unit vector in the z direction. So this is the positive z hat vector. And y cross x is negative z hat. And y cross y, that's zero. Putting that together, we have negative 356 newton meters in the z hat. Note that I changed units from newton millimeters to newton meters. Now let's redo the same problem using Varignon's theorem. We can break up the force into two components. The force component in the y hat direction 
and a force component in the x direction. Given force vector from before, we can see that this is the force in the x hat direction, and this is the force in the y hat direction. Recalling that the magnitude of the moment from a force about a point is equal to the magnitude of that force times the perpendicular distance d to the force's line of action. This is particularly useful when using or applying Bernoulli's theorem. The perpendicular component is the distance along the x-axis to the y component, and the perpendicular component to the fx component is the distance along the y-axis. To determine the direction of the moment, about O from the force F, we will use the right hand rule. Fully describe the moment, we'll have the magnitude as described by the magnitude of the force times the perpendicular distance to the line of action and the direction determined from the right hand rule. Utilizing this, we see the moment from the force in the system about O is equal to Fx times D which is 625 millimeters. And what is the unit vector describing it, or u? Well, if we put your right hand in the y-axis, along the y-axis, that's r, or d, extending your hand along the y-axis, and then curling it to the left, because fx is pointing to the left, you'll find that this gives a positive rotation. So that is a positive z hat. Next, we will count for the moment about O from the y component of the force. So we have plus magnitude of the y component of the force times its perpendicular component, which is 875 millimeters. Using the right hand rule, if you extend your right fingers along the x axis, and curl them down, you would get um, your thumb pointing into the page or in the negative z hat direction. An important thing to note here is when I filled this out, I took the magnitude of the force components, which is just the positive parts of the forces. The sign will be determined by the right hand rule, giving me negative 356 newton meters. Now, this is where we can use our intuition to check if this makes sense. This solution, since it's a negative moment, is telling us that the moment should be causing a clockwise rotation about O. If I use my right hand rule, extending my fingers along a line to the line of action of the force and curling them in the direction of the force, you find that your thumb is pointing into the board which is a negative or a clockwise rotation about O. So intuitively, we can see that this answer makes sense. Using Baring-Nahn's principle and the rectangular components, we can see that in a two-dimensional case, you can quickly calculate the moment by just using the orthogonal components. Here we get the same answer before as if we had just used the cross product. Feel free to use whichever method you prefer.